guest today is Corey Finney. Corey is the founder of The Safe Project. Corey is an award-winning blogger and inspirational social networking speaker who has helped thousands of people pay it forward. Corey has been, giving, has been giving a gift, and he has used this gift of love and passion as a platform to helping others. Corey, welcome to A Deadly Silence. Thank you for having me today, Larry. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you here. And I know that you and I only met about a month ago. Yes, you know, briefly, uh, too. There was a, a safe um, rally yeah. that you held here in Brockton. Addiction just, Awareness. Just, uh, what was that again? Addiction Awareness. Ad addiction Awareness. A uh, rally that you held out on just on the outside of the, uh, Belmont Street, outside of Brockton High School, yeah. and you had a good turnout out there that beautiful sunny afternoon. I can remember stopping by and, and introducing yeah. ourselves and uh, asking you to come on our show. So it's great to have you here. Thank you so, so much for having me. Tell us about the Safe Project. Safe Project is about creating hope, awareness, and change surrounding the drug epidemic. That's not just in Boston; it's all over the United States. Originally, I started it in Boston, and I travel a lot, and I started meeting people like all over the world, and uh, they had the same problem and the same issues, um, and I've never been an addict before, so I learned it through someone else um, who unfortunately passed away from uh, addiction. So you had a friend who passed yes. away from the overdosing, okay. Mm -hmm. So I learned everything I did, could from this kid, and I took that and ran with it. So when I travel, I started meeting people, I started connecting with them, and that's a really safe project really came from. I connected with um, a few other people locally. Well, it, it, it's interesting when you take the passion that you have for the uh, awareness and education of, of, of the drug epidemic out there, how when you start opening up to people and start talking to them, how many people are walking the same walk as you, you know, to a certain extent, whether it's a parent of, of, of somebody that, they, that is, they've lost a loved one, or it's somebody who is dealing with an addiction of a friend, a co-worker, you know, uh, a classmate, even potentially out there. It, it's just mind-boggling. Everyone's affected by Every, it. Everyone's just affected. Everyone's affected. It, doesn't, it all walks of life. I've met from yeah. celebrities to the, you know, the poorest of people and everyone in between. So I've met a lot of people um, that are affected by this. So you started in Boston, yep. you get to travel around the country a lot, and you start talking about you know, your experiences through your friend who passed. Does, is SAFE, S-A-F-E, standing for, what's that stand for? Um, it stands for Sean Allen Flynn Education, because originally my friend Sean who passed away, okay. I wanted to come up with something. His name just happened to spell out S-A-F, and then I added the E on the end for education, education. to educate you know, people about it. A lot of people kind of like shy away from it, you know, or don't really open up to it. You know? Well, I mean, it, it's, you know, as a parent myself who has two children that, you know, were addicted to heroin, I didn't know where to turn to. You know, my wife and I, we didn't know where to turn to or who to turn to. Or do you even, how do you speak out about this, you know? How do you ask for help? You know, where do you get help from, you know? You and don't me know. Me too, not even yeah. um, I've understanding it. Um, my friend came to me, he said, I have something to tell you. And this kid like, had a beautiful house, had a business, had a few cars, a few aunts, the whole nine yards. He says, I'm an addict. And I said, okay. For me, I didn't even think of it. And when he said he was a heroin addict, I, my mouth dropped. I knew nothing about the drug. I knew nothing about any of it. And he says, you know, I need rides to all these different things that he was court ordered to do. So I left my job for a year. And I helped him. I decided to bring him to all his tests, drug tests, and courts, and whatever so, he had to do to get to help so, him. So, so, so here's, here's a, a young man who has the, the, the lifestyle that, you know, I mean, who has a life that everyone is hoping for a family, yep. home, job, right. and he's an addict. Yep. You it's know, the same story, though. He got hurt, and that's how it all, it all stemmed okay. from something. So, so he had an injury that yeah. happened, got had an injury, prescribed, prescribed some pills. pain medication, the pills. Then it okay. went from buying them on the streets to you know, getting too expensive after he lost his house and fiance and everything. Mm -hmm. Then he went to, on the streets, and then that's where it all started. So he basically cashed in everything he had, family, friends, you know, other everything. than yourself, because you seem to have stuck he by him. He reached out to me. He found me yeah. on Facebook. We mm -hmm. haven't talked in years. Oh, okay. And he reached out. Mm -hmm. you know. And, and uh, you 
basically took it upon yourself to, to try to help him along yeah. as he was asking for help. And during that process, you began to learn about the whole addiction issue. Right. And well, as I started doing it too, like that's when I started meeting other people. I started learning about those people as well. And then hearing their stories, you know, I was hugging like the mothers who were grieving their kids that weren't even gone. Mm -hmm. You know, they just didn't know what to do. They were all lost. And they were dropping their kids off. And I would be, I would sit there with their families outside in my car. And we started to talk a little bit more. And I was understanding and learning from their experiences on how, you know, what they were going through. And then I was thinking, this is what I'm going to be going through mm -hmm. because I'm just at the beginning. You know, right. and then I end up finding out all these other friends, you know, had the same issue and, you, you know, you can only give what you have, you mm -hmm. know, so all I could give is my time at that time. I said, I'll give you my time. I would drive you guys, you know, OCC or wherever you have to go, bring you to rehab, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, but. But in the case of your friend, it, it ultimately, he passed from an overdose. Yeah, so he passed yeah, from an overdose. Yeah. And then that rose, the SAFE project rose immediately afterwards. It started like the week, that week. So tell us about the blogging aspect. I think that's an interesting, um, you know, way of communicating, you know, the awareness and education aspect of it. How did that all begin? So actually I started blogging in like 1993 um, about inspiration. I always tried to want to help people. My grandmother was blind, so I used to, um, at like the age of seven, I used to walk her through the cities of Brockton to get her onto like the bat bus mm -hmm. and get her to different places in the city. Um, so when I started my first blog, I, want, I just wanted to help, I just wanted to connect with somebody, connect with other people. Not a big audience, just mm -hmm. at first it was a small little thing and it was about um, just helping people, you know, and always paying it forward. And then teaching those people, they also have to pay it forward. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not the circle. So you start a, a comment on... Yep, on, so I thought what I started was, was like small little quotes, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then the quotes led to me writing like little stories and like uh, things that people can connect with, you know. So mm -hmm. every day I do do a quote every day okay. uh, on Facebook. Uh, and if I miss it, I hear about it because yeah. people will text or inbox people, me. They're looking for it now. Because they yeah. look forward to it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's something that they, you know, that, that helps them through the day. Whatever the case is, everyone has, you know, everyone's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. You have a Facebook tagline, whatever the... Hashtag? Yeah, hashtag. Yeah, I have two. Yeah, two? Yeah. What, what are they? I have um, the Pound uh, Safe Project. Okay. 77, no, actually, pound, sorry, Pound Safe Project, and then the other one's Pound Corespire, so okay. it's C-O-R-E-S-P-I-R-E. -E. Okay, we'll be sure to get that flagged yes. down during the course of the conversation so that people can see it and look yeah. it up, you know, from that perspective, you know. So you're blogging, your audience starts to just get a little bigger? <laughs> yeah, so my audience got, yeah, very big. So now when I go, like, I have family in the West Coast, and I drive across country a couple of times a year. Mm -hmm. So I stop over and I see people that I've met on, through my little journey. Uh, some people that have been fans of mine from the beginning. I'll stop in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, all the way to Vegas and L.A. Let them know you're making the stops along the way. Yep, and, yep. And so I, I document the whole thing on my blog, oh, the whole, great. whole journey, the whole trip. And uh, I have dinner with them and chit-chat and stuff. You know, I, they open their homes to me. You know, I open my heart to them. My door is always open to them if they yep. ever want to come mm -hmm. to Boston. Absolutely. So what have been some of the um, highlights of that type of trip across country that you, you know? Just, you know, I, you know, I keep saying it's about helping people though, you know, so whether I'm, if I go there and say they need like electricity bill paid or something so, like mm -hmm. something like that, I would do that for them or they need groceries or, mm -hmm. you know, like I always say, you can only give what you have. Right. You can't exactly. give any more yeah. than that. Mm -hmm. People that do that, you know, that's why you end up in mm -hmm. debt. <laughs> Yeah. You know. Now you mentioned as you were writing the blog, now you're writing your e quotes each day. Um, are you writing a book? Yes. <laughs> I have a couple books going on. Okay, tell I us have about that. Three book deal, but I worked on two right now. So the first one I did was the grass isn't always green on the other side, but I decided to put that one on the back burner and and put the safe one before it. So I'm gonna be um, publishing safe in August. So SAFE's gonna be about the epidemic, and what I did was I collaborated um, a bunch of stuff that I've heard over the years. 
people are like, I wish they had a book on, you know, this, or I wish I knew this, and I wish I knew that. Pretty much everything is mm -hmm. just in one book. So it talks about the it's epidemic. It's kind of a resource book. Yeah, and I have a couple yeah. local uh, poets that are writing in it. So yeah. I have a couple of people that, you know, want to be a part of it as well, so mm -hmm. I gave them some pages. Matt Gannon, one of those yes, individuals? Matt, I know we've yes. had Matt on the show in the Love, past. He's a very uh, good yeah. guy. Yeah, Matt, yeah. Uh, terrific guy. I was very happy that he wanted yeah. to do that. He's now with Wicked Sober out yes. of Boston now. Wicked right? Sober, uh, Mike um, Duggan? Dugan? Mike, Mike Dugan, yeah, was the founder. And, uh, you know, in the case of Matt, he was a individual who became an addict and yeah. bought him out. And, uh, His story is pretty amazing. Pulled, pulled himself up. Yeah. And uh, he did it all through poetry. Yeah, and, and uh, wrote a book of poetry. You yeah. know? So he is in my yeah. book. He wrote That's great. some pages in there. Fantastic. And so it's going to be kind of a, a resource material of questions. It's going to be about, you, yeah, resource. Yeah. And then I, and, and throughout the book, I have my quotes. You have your quotes. So right? I have my mm -hmm. quotes so people don't, you know, it keeps them engaged. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not going to be a dragged on, you know, book, yeah. but mm -hmm. it's going to be out in August, you know, for my birthday. That's what I wanted. Okay. So that was my present to myself. Ah, I've been working. Very good. And you mentioned the grass is not always greener on the other side yeah. is another. So that's a more motivational yeah. book. And it's just pretty much explaining to people that, you know, people always think, oh, I can move to like, say, L.A. or California and I can start my life over there. And it's like, if you don't finish what you started here, how can you plant your roots somewhere else? Because mm -hmm. all you're doing is taking that baggage with you to another location. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, you know, it's something my mother always told me growing up, you know, hey, go ahead, kid, the grass isn't always greener on right. the other side, you know, when you think it's you want It's really to, not, you yeah. know, and I was one of those people. I moved around a little bit, lived mm -hmm. here and there, because I always thought the grass was always green, and I always ended up back here. Always ended up. And I realized, oh, I didn't finish, but I started here. That's why I can't reroute myself anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the uh, aspects that you see happen when you're holding your rallies, you know, on education and so forth out there? So now, that is basically what SAFE's about, is we do rallies and galas and stuff. So what I get from it is, you know, you were there briefly. Yeah. Um, it's about all these people coming together. It's addicts, it's families, it's people that have lost loved ones, uh, all in one place, you know, to show addiction awareness and show people that you're not alone. That, you know, you are in it together and people do care. You know, people always come up to me and they're like, well, you, you know, how do you understand addiction? I was like, well, you don't have to be an addict to understand it. I understand yeah. it through other people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the hard parts that, you know, I think society and even, you know, the, the individuals who are dealing with addiction problem, you know, have trouble understanding is that you aren't alone. You know, but if you don't speak up and ask, alone. ask for help, <laughs> you know, then, yes. yeah, you're going you're gonna to be alone, you know. And, and, and that's sometimes difficult, uh, you know, sometimes the pride, the shame, the embarrassment of the addiction, you know, how it's affecting, you know, the different families yes. out, out there. You know, people don't know how to and sometimes And I've seen ask. it in all different levels. Yeah. So I have seen, like, the very, very rich, and I've seen them, like, sugar-coated. I've seen their kids yeah. pass away from it, and they just, blow, I don't know, they go up a wall and they move on. You know, I've, I know like high profile people that have lost their kids to addiction and they don't want to be an advocate for it. Mm -hmm. They've already told me like, I don't want my name attached to it. Like, how could you want your name attached to it? Yeah. It's because they just don't get it. Right. They you don't know? get it. They just don't yeah. get it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I try to explain, try to help. It doesn't matter because if they already have that wall up, you can't break that wall down because that's how they, people deal with things differently. Well, everybody does deal with things differently, but I think in the aspects of education and awareness, which, you know, Safe Project is all about, I think we're beginning to crack those walls. Yeah, yes. I mean, I, I, and I think that's I see what's a important. lot of it now, especially you know, now. Yeah, I know, mean, More you know, people are coming out to my rallies. Uh, a lot of people reach out about the gala that I'm working on right now. A lot more people at the beginning. It wasn't like that. Can I had you tell a us a little bit about the gala? Can, can you yeah. share what, what's going the on The gala there? is going to be um, like more of an upscale um, event. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a lot of speakers there. Um, a few I can't name right now, right. Mm -hmm. but I have a few speakers going to be there. Um, and it's just really about, it's, it's like 
It's about addiction awareness, obviously. It's elevating the yes. addiction but, awareness education aspect. You know, it's just bringing it to a different level. Mm -hmm. You know, the rally is the rally. We hold signs. Um, we show our support that way. This yeah. way is more for people to engage with one another, mm -hmm. and it gives Matt a chance to go up and, you know, say his poetry. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It gives families a way to mourn their loved ones because I want to have a big screen there, you know, that displays all their loved ones yeah. on it. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's gonna be a little bit for everybody. I'm gonna have tables set up for Wicked Sober and for other organizations. And where's this gonna take place? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Not sure. Okay, I have a still... lot of people that have reached out okay. to offer their still like in space the planning and stages. stuff. So still okay. at the very beginning, probably be like a fall. Okay. Mm -hmm. Will be in the Boston area, possibly? Uh, um, Boston sure. or even Brockton. Uh, you know, okay. a lot of people. This is my root start here. Right. So this is where I'm from. So I try to do as much as I can here, mm -hmm. and people will just come. People will come oh, yeah. wherever I go. So, you know, but absolutely, I believe you know. Don't ever forget where you came from. No, absolutely. And as you get the details become more and more along the way, uh, we also have the Deadly Silence has a radio show each week. We'd love to get yes, that you know publicized for you as the date draws closer. You know, to let yeah. the audience out there know that uh, the gala would be coming coming along as well. Perfect. You know? So. So what changes do you see out there since you have got involved? Are you seeing any positive changes? Are you seeing... I see a uh, lot of positivity. Even when I'm out now, people will come over and just like, even just a hug, yeah. you know, and they're like, thank you. And I said, no, thank you, you know, because mm -hmm. before people weren't like that. It was kind of like, you know, they knew who I was. They knew of like what was going on with the organization. They knew about SAFE. You know, but a lot of people didn't want to really get involved at the beginning. I have a lot of people get involved now because now they have a voice. And I've, I always tell them, I didn't do anything. All I did was provide you guys a platform. A platform. Well, I that, invited yeah. you, provided mm -hmm. you a platform. Right. And now you have the voice that you want because mm -hmm. no judgment. There's no judgment. Mm -hmm. I haven't, you know, tomorrow I'm going to be doing an um, open conversation. I do uh, online chats and online talks and stuff. So a lot of people from all over the world, we do an inbox on um Facebook as a group and people voice their opinions and we're talking about like the gala, we're talking about, you know, recent passings or kids going through rehabs and I have other people on there monitoring it and helping answer questions and answers and stuff. Oh great. So it's kind yeah. of So I do a lot of circle groups, I do a lot of support groups. So I go to parks and I do like circle groups there. Mm -hmm. But the online thing, or Skype in as a big tool for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to connect with other people like all of us. They feel a sense of ownership and they're a part of the process, you know, when they yes. get engaged like that. Yeah, I love, yeah, I want people to get engaged. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. What other things do you see happening in the future for SAFE? So I want to plan, I'm going to be planning a walk, addiction yep. awareness walk, um, so vigils. So we have a lot of different things in the works right now, you know, so I started with the rally. And now I'm working on the gala. I'm working on next year's rally. Mm -hmm. And then people want me to work on a walk and a vigil. So there's a bunch of different things going on right now. Now, would SAFE team up with any of the other programs that are out there? Yep. I mean, like, uh, you know, we, we, when we talk about, you know, the parents, like the Learn to Cope organization, fantastic, yes. you know, uh, family support group out there. Big for, fan. Yeah. You know, do you, would you team up with other organizations yes. like that? I've actually had um, other organizations recently reach, reach out and ask if they could be part of the gala. They said, would you mind teaming up with us? Mm -hmm. So I'm willing to work with them. So we're getting together, actually, after Fourth of July. So mm -hmm. we're getting together with a few groups, and we're going to discuss, you know, what their ideas are and just go forward. Well, those of us here at A Deadly Silence would welcome that opportunity, too. So let me be the first to extend oh. that out there. You know, we Thank can be so supportive yes. in any way, shape. Let us, you know, let us know would be a part of that I as definitely, well. Definitely, definitely will. Because it's all about education. It's all about awareness. That's what it's about. And, and, you know, what we've seen through our experiences, you know, uh, the loss of a friend, the addiction of a couple of my children, you know, the other parents who have lost their, their loved ones, you know, it's all about education and awareness today, you know. You, you, I believe that. We, I strongly We can no longer that. suffer in silence is another way I like to look oh, at it. I like it. that. We can no longer suffer in silence. We need to raise our voices and, and, and let, let those who are suffering know that they're not alone, as you pointed yeah. out earlier, you know, from that perspective. Well, you said a third book, too, did you not? 
You're working yes, on the third book? I have a third book, but I'm not, I'm not working on it yet. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, at first I started working on one. The Grass Isn't Always Greener has been done for a while. And then the, the publisher's like, oh, you know, why don't you work on, you know, the cause? And I said, that's a good idea. And then once I sat right in, that was it. I said, I don't want to publish that book now. I was like, I want to publish this one first. Uh-huh. She was going to kill me. <laughs> she was like, really? You're going to do this now in the midst? I said, I need to file an extension. I need to file it now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, because as publishing companies, you need to, if you don't file an extension, there could be a lot of... You lose your spot. <laughs> yeah, legal <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Yeah, legally. Like I was very okay. thankful and grateful for them to work with me. Mm-hmm. So that's good. Um, you know, we, as I mentioned, we have also the radio program, uh, which is out of Taunton. Actually, oh, we, yeah. we we I'm do the we do the uh, cable access here in Brockton, but we now have a radio show out of Taunton down on WVBF. So, you know, I'd love to have you come on. Oh, yes. to, to the radio Anytime. show and promote the Gaylor and 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 with the book comes out in August we can get you on and oh, perfect. start Thank promoting you. I appreciate start it. promoting the book as well you know because I think it's important when we talk about the education and awareness aspects of things you know? yeah I appreciate that so what do you see for yourself now going forward out there uh, eventually know? like this would be something I would do full time I really you know I do you know people don't believe I have a full time job. Because I'm, I'm like very involved, my days really don't end because mm-hmm. I work all day and then I do, I work on SAPE all night. Mm-hmm. So it's just my passion, you know. But when I wasn't working on SAFE, it was, I was blogging. Now I'm just using two and three screens at a time. Mm-hmm. I have a laptop and two screens going at once. Really? Now, do you uh, solicit funds to support the programs that you do in the no, efforts? Um, Are there no, grants like, that you might be applying for? You know? um, what I've been doing is, like, I sew T-shirts. You know, I give okay. these away. I fund these 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I pretty much funded it myself. Um, okay. But, like, mm-hmm. any of the shirt money I got from the rally, I put it into, uh, a, like, a, a savings account that's just for safe. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's going towards the gala. Mm-hmm. Great. So anything you know that comes in, I guess. Looking I for sponsors to... for the gala? Yep, so Benjamin work for sponsors <laughs> and, and uh, advertisers and yeah, stuff. Yeah, advertisers and sponsors, okay. No, but I'm not yeah. pressuring. It's not a pressure thing. That's what, you know, it's not about that. And I want people to, you know. Well, it, it, it's a combination of putting out a quality quality product, you know, uh, that people will be able to wrap their hands around and, and, and run with. You know, that's yeah. the key. You know, a lot of people are waiting to be educated out there. They just don't know it yet. Right. <laughs> you know? That's why I start yeah. with the youth, too. Yeah. I do. I start with all those, these kids in my the book. Yeah. You know, Jaden, who's in the other room. Mm-hmm. You know, and I start with them, and then I start with all their friends, you know, and then their families, because then their families ask questions. Do you see developing an educational model, say, something targeted toward, like, the middle school age, age group, 6th, 7th, and 8th oh, yeah. grades? I mean, that's kind of I where... actually... A few of the kids are six, seven, and eight. Like you saw some of the kids at the rally, they were young. Yeah, right. You know, mm-hmm. all those kids have talked openly about, you know, addiction and, you know, how it destroys families. They've been to vigils with me. They've cried with families they didn't even know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so I know they get it. You know, yeah. And I, and, I, and I think, you know, the challenge today on the education aspect is how do we develop programs that we can go into like a school district and you know, put on a education awareness program to that age group, you know. Um, and it's not only the kids; it also has to be the parents of those kids. Oh, that, I strong believe with that too. Yeah. Is like you know, you know, you can educate the kids, but you got to also educate the parents too. You got to right. educate them all. Everyone in all different walks, you know, life needs should be educated. You know, it stops at youth, but yeah. you still have to work on the rest of it. I know there's a national program out there that, you know, here in the city of Brockton, it's uh, led by the uh, Brockton Police Department Officer Nancy Lieberg. It's called Not My Kid. I don't know if you're familiar oh, with I that Oh, I just heard about program. this recently on YouTube, you know, yes. Yeah, but, but I mean, it, it, it's a fascinating program that is really targeted toward the parents, you know, and and the few occasions that, you know, the Not My Kid program has been you know, um, seminars have been held. It's been difficult to get those parents to come out, you know, to, to, to see it. Uh, but it was, it was actually very, very rewarding to see that the Brockton Public School System, uh, Superintendent Kathy Smith, championed with the Brockton Police Department and held one of these sessions at one of the middle schools wow. one evening. And, you know, they did a, a two-hour, you know, um, 
educational as aspects, you know. That's they had amazing. probably 50, 60 people that showed up, but I mean, it's 50, 60 more people that you touched that night on education right. and awareness. So it's another mm -hmm. one of the, the venues that are, that's out there, you know, right now. And uh, you're going to see more and more, I think, um, of, um, I want to say, show and tell or theater theatrics, you know, so that... Um, it's, it's, it's something to go in and speak about what's happening, but it's a different thing to be able to be there and, you know, look at a typical bedroom that's set up and, you know, say to the, I thought say, about this, yeah. say to the parents, okay, find the drug paraphernalia in yeah. your kid's bedroom because it's there. <laughs> you just don't know where to look. Right. But let us, you know, show you the ways that we're finding, you know, where drugs are being hid potentially, you know. And it's not to be a police policeman so much, but it's just to be heighten that education, that awareness aspect of it, you know, even more. Yeah, you know. A lot of parents work so much now. A lot of them have two or three jobs. They oversee the kids, and I understand that. But you also have to know what is what is really going on. Mm -hmm. You know, look for the signs and listen to your intuition. Cause, oh, you know, I mean, your gut instinct is going to be yeah, right 99% of the time. If something seems off, it, some, that means it is yeah, off. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to listen to that. Right, and you've got to look and, uh, you know, you've got to be the parent. You know, I, I was attending a, a bullying session actually last night as an example, you know, where, you know, one parent uh, had mentioned that her sister was allowing her kids to negotiate the outcomes of different discussions, you know. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the facilitator was like, what? There's no negotiation between a parent and a kid. It's what the parent wants. That's, you know, the way it's going to be. This negotiation, you know, stop, right, <laughs> you know, yeah. from that perspective. You know, and, it, and the same thing in the drug world. You know, if you suspect that there's something going on, you know, look behind the, the sailing panels, look underneath the mattresses or, oh, yeah, or wherever. You never know where yeah, they're hitting. Yeah, you never know what's going no. on out there. So we've got just about a minute left, believe it or not. So oh, no. I'll give you the last word if there's something you might want to say about the pro uh, Project SAFE. Yeah. Um, first, I just want to thank you for having me on the show today. And uh, SAFE is a great you know, way for people to feel safe and be safe. And it is about creating hope, awareness, and change surrounding the drug epidemic. You know, not just in Boston, all around the United States, because it is hitting everywhere. I have people reaching out from all over the world, you know, that need help. And we have to extend our arms out there and, and, and reach out and touch anybody yes. and everybody who's asking for help out there today, because a lot of people are now They just don't know where to find it. That's uh, yeah, the right. thing. They, they just don't know where yeah. to find it. Exactly. Well, it, it, it sounds like it's a terrific organization, uh, you know, and it's probably a great tribute to your friend who passed on. And uh, on behalf of all of us here at A Deadly Silence, I want to say, Corey, thank you for coming in and sharing with us, you know, the uh, goals and objectives of SAFE, as well as we're looking forward to your publishing your, your first and second book over the course of the next summer. And uh, on behalf of all of us here at A Deadly Silence, we hope to see you again at our next episode. Thank you.